During this special edition of Gun Talk, we're talking new calibers, holsters, guns, lasers, and more. In fact, there's just no telling what we're going to talk about once we get on the air here because we've got some of our friends here. We're, we're on the, the set of the Guns and Gear studio here having a bunch of fun. We're shooting TV and doing radio at the same time. It's kind of a weird little thing we're doing here. And so if you're listening to this on radio, you can always tune in and go on to our YouTube channel and you can see there what we're up to. You can actually watch what we're, we're doing. It's kind of fun. So we, we brought in some of our friends here. Matt Craighead from Crossbreed Holsters is with us. How you doing, man? My fine, sir. My fine. Pleasure well, being here. Absolutely. Heather Mayan, thank you for joining us. This is great. Thank you for having us. Randy Luth from, what do you call your company? Oh, gee, it's Luth <laughs> AR. What an idea. <laughs> Keep it in the family. That's right. Of course. And a lot of folks know you as the uh, creator and inventor, the star- startup guy who created uh, DPMS Panther Arms. I did. 1986, DPMS uh, started in the garage uh, of our basement, basically, in Minnesota, and stumbled around. And actually, as we were talking last night, part of the reason for the success of the rifle side of DPMS started here in Crotch Springs, Louisiana. Just where right here in this area. It, it, just outside of Baton Rouge, where I ended up uh, buying the lower receiver component of the rifle. Because you were doing parts, right? Started off with parts, AR parts, and a lot of people don't realize that DPMS started with 1911 parts probably first and then migrated into the AR side from military contracts. 1911 parts. Yeah. So you actually know how to shoot a pistol too? No. No, okay. <laughs> no, All right, that's good. my weak point. <laughs> <laughs> Rifle and shotgun's not bad, but... Uh, so, you, so you bought a company yeah. doing doing lowers and then you said, well, I guess we're in the AR business, huh? Yeah, we at, at the time we were purchasing other... Lower receivers, um, I think Olympic Arms, we were using their lowers first on the early pre-DPMS rifles and then right. and, uh, ended up getting the uh, the investment cast lowers and then migrated to the forge lowers and off we went back in 1993. All right, Heather, you're new with the company, but you're certainly not new with Luth because you grew up, you're Randy's daughter, yeah. and you grew up in this crazy business this firearms world right <laughs> yeah so did that like press you into service were you making guns when you were little <laughs> what would you do he, he did hire me um back when i was able to work what 12 13 and then he good, fired good, me good child labor <laughs> he fired me many times <laughs> rehired me again then and, okay yeah. to be continued <laughs> <laughs> we'll see how it works out right yeah okay in the meantime you did like a, a lot of folks did you said that's great i'm out of here yeah and you went to california you did you did all this other kind of work and you worked for big companies and all and now you're bringing that expertise back to yeah. help help out, trying. Yep. You know, trying you know, what you're saying? He's trying. <laughs> yeah. That's right. He's, uh, you know, they, they say that about you. I've heard that. <laughs> Keep on trying. Yeah, that's right. So, okay, we got to talk about the stuff you got laid out in front of you. First of all, what is Luth AR? What What are you guys doing now? Well, I sold DPMS back in December of 2007. Stayed on with uh, the Freedom Group for a couple of years, and then, of course, had had a five year no compete. And got thinking about a niche in the AR arena that needed to be filled, and that was a lightweight adjustable stock for the AR-15. Okay. And, of course, the AR-15 in the past several years has really taken off, probably the last 10 years. Right. And so with that comes more volume and more opportunities to fill that niche. So the niche was that with with young shooters, with lady shooters, and even with uh, a lot of different facial features and shooters sizes of different of men, sizes and shapes yes need something to adjust their shooting position and cheek well, but we already had an adjustable collapsible stock available mm-hmm. everywhere so sure. wh- so why do we need another stock well you had adjustable stocks typically for the carbine rifles but not for the fixed rifles okay and so we price was a factor as well so not only weight but price was the two big areas of the niche that needed to be filled and we feel that uh, with the MBA stock modular buttstock assembly that we we developed uh, a couple of years ago and launched about a year and a half ago, we feel that uh, the niche has been filled and now we're migrating into a new carbine stock later this year, really? which has the same look and shape. Okay, uh, I'm sitting here thinking about shooters of different sizes and shapes. We got, you know, Heather shooting an AR. You got Matt and and me, big guys shooting at ARs. The guns are not going to fit all of us the same way. Mm-hmm. Fair enough. I mean, so what do you do? Heather, what do you do with this? What does the stock do for us? 
Well, you can adjust it. Um, what's great about it is the back of the stock, it extends out um, an inch and one Okay, so you get a length of pull adjustment. Yep. Okay. So it can go, you know, if you have longer arms, bigger person, goes back, shorter okay. like me, you uh -huh. know, I'll keep it in. And then cheek piece as well. You know, some people have longer necks and oh, okay. upper body. So right, right. Or they want to see down the barrel. And, and you can raise the comb higher and lower, which I got to tell you, for me, that's one of the big things. Because I find that ARs, when I cheek them, my eye is always underneath the optic. Yeah. Don't you find? Yeah, definitely. And that says, we, t we were talking earlier, the design of the AR-15 M16 rifle is that the bore of the barrel, the bore of the upper receiver, and the bore of the stock all, are all one line. It's all the same line. Correct. Okay. Whereas shotguns that have the adjustment by design, the wooden stock is, or the comb is lowered. So that is one of the, one of the issues which you just brought up, getting your cheek piece high enough right especially now with the with the flat tops that became real popular back in what the early 90s so now you got your optic an inch, an inch and a half two inches higher than the mm -hmm. bore so if you mm -hmm. cheek your gun you're actually looking underneath the optic mm -hmm. and then now you got to pick your head up which both is inaccurate because now you don't have a good cheek weld yeah. and also it slows you down because if you first cheek the gun and then your head's bobbing up and down like a whack-a-mole you know mm -hmm. and you're trying to find something to look through you know a lot of people i just thought of this to get around that 20 years ago, there was the Delta cheek piece, which was a clamp-on cheek piece that went on the A2 or the A1 buttstock. Hadn't thought of that. Yeah, and that's kind of disappeared. I've not seen that sure. anymore because of other products like this that have come out. Okay, so now obviously this is just replaceable. Just put it on any given AR, right? Yeah, yeah. This uh, The MBA1, which this is, the fully adjustable version, fits on the A2 buffer tube, which is the round buffer tube. Okay. And there's a, there's a lot of confusion to to a lot of new shooters, a lot of new AR-15 people don't realize that there there are two buffer tubes, the standard round A2 buffer tube, and then the ribbed carbine buffer tube. Mm -hmm. So we get there is some confusion with that, but um, we soon will solve that when we come out with our carbine version. Oh, okay. So you're going to be able to take care of everybody with that then. Yeah. Okay. Uh, where do people find out about this? Well, Heather, she's our, she's our media person. She's the media marketing <laughs> guru person yeah, who brings us in. Website? Yeah, yeah website, www.luth-ar.com. L-U-T-H. L-U-T-H-A-R.com. How do you spell A-R? A-R. Oh, okay. All right. Just, just checking. <laughs> Got that one. Um, and we're on Facebook. Oh, yeah? Facebook and um, YouTube. Okay. Maybe migrate to Twitter and Instagram soon. We'll see. Yeah, I don't know much about <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, I, I, I want I want to see Randy doing that. One. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's, that's, that's pretty. Then we're gonna get him on Snapchat and uh, yeah. gonna say what? Still that working is. on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Tell you what, uh, hold on, guys. We'll take a quick break. When we come back, I want to talk to uh, Matt about some holsters that he's brought, some stuff for us to take a look at. We'll talk about some of these guns. Then we're gonna just get into talking about shooting and guns and ammo and all kind of cool stuff. So don't go anywhere. I'm Tom Gresham. This is Gun Talk. We'll be right back. Gun Talk. I'm Tom Gresham. Of course, if you'd like to check out some of the things we do, go to our website, guntalk.com. Uh, check out our DVDs we have for sale. It's uh, shopguntalk.com. We have, let's see, Concealed Carry 1, Concealed Carry 2, Fighting with the 1911, uh, let's see, our First Person Defender series. There's another one in there I can't remember because we've got all these different DVDs we're doing. So uh, you never know what you're going to find. And also, of course, on YouTube. In fact, if you want to see what we're doing right now on YouTube, I brought in some of my friends here, and we're... This is an experiment. You guys are our guinea pigs. You know that, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot, right? Yeah. Yeah. Is that good? <laughs> <laughs> they walk in and say, guess what you're doing today? <laughs> well, we're in the middle of shooting TV for the uh, the Guns and Gear show. And Guns and Gear, if you don't know, is we bring in all the cool stuff and lay it all out, all the new things, and we're showing, you know, the Ruth AR stocks, and Matt's brought in uh, more holsters and cool stuff so what have you guys been up to on the uh the holster accessory side of things we have really been experimenting with the holster accessory side yeah we're expanding more into the lasers uh lasers are becoming very very popular mm -hmm. we're working more with holsters in the different series in the different styles of lasers uh crimson trace works very well with us uh we do offer a lot of super tucks and mini tucks 
for the Crimson Trace because that's getting real big. We're really working with a lot of that. Uh, the way we make our holsters, it really kind of causes us a unique challenge. How's that? Uh, well, the way we make our retention, everything we do is hand-formed. I mean, it just flat piece of Kydex, and actually, we train people. Everything is done by hand. We actually call them Picasso's of Kydex because everything we do is is almost an art. Are you, are you saying they actually mold it with their hands? We mold everything you see. Everything, well, not the clips, of course, but everything here is done by hand. The leather is dyed, is treated, is prepped by hand, but the Kydex pockets Mm -hmm. are all done by hand. Wow. Uh, We've got several different processes that we run this through, but it's all done by hand. You've got to warm it up, and people are just pushing it around the Basically, we have an oven that a modified, uh, it's a modified press oven that we heat our Kydex with, Mm -hmm. and then we start laying it down, and... It's all. A, it's kind of really an art if you ever watch it. it. But the way we do it, we get the retention in different places and the follow different places. So when you get into lasers, the, the width, the definition, the depth really gets a new challenge it's more for complex, us. It is a lot more complex. When you start to draw it, you you notice places where it hangs that you uh, wouldn't normally hang sure, on, sure. on a regular holster. Okay. So these kind of things give us a challenge but we are working on that um well, we, we were just talking uh, with gary from crimson trace and uh you actually get a heads up they work with you yes. ahead of time even before yes. a laser is introduced yeah like for for instance the uh the glock 43 yes just came yes. out it's right the glock 43 just came out uh, gary works us very well with us we've actually got one we're working on in the shop right now as we speak so mm-hmm. the the holsters with the lasers for that should be re- released hopefully by next week, but okay. very, very so soon. As people are hearing this, because this is going to be a little bit delayed, uh, by the time they hear this, it'll be out. It's ready hopefully, to go. Hopefully, yes, yes. Uh, I've got molds sitting down there being made. Um, I should have my molds done by the end of this week, and then I'll get them back into the shop. I'll put lasers on them. And the way we make our molds, we have to make our molds a little bit different. We do a lot of work with our molds. Because the heating and the hand process, we destroy a lot of really a lot of molds. Yes, it, it just wears a mold out just from the pressure huh. and the different movements of it. But that's it's interesting. It is. It, it's 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 a different process. It's really kind of a neat one. Now, how many people do you have doing that? Oh my gosh, we have got uh, altogether. There's about thirty eight thirty eight of us in the shop. Uh, this will be our 10th year anniversary. Wow! Congratulations, uh, Mark. Well, thank you. Uh, Mark actually started this in. In his garage. I was going to say, another garage deal. Right? Yeah, this this started in Mark's garage. Just like you guys. Uh, garage logic. Garage logic. I like it. <laughs> and and we have gone from one working in the garage. Mark went and got a, a different building, and there was about four to eight people there. Then we moved to a different shop. Then we moved to two separate shops. And Carol has built a new building just last year. We moved into August, so there's... There's about 38 of us all under one roof so, now. Sounds familiar, kind of like the way you grew. Just you keep outgrowing yourself. Well, you know, God I, bless America. You know, I kind of read an article here in the Week magazine not too long about some of the most popular companies in the United States started in garages well, with you know, an idea. Absolutely. And, and you know, the other side of that is, I, it's been my experience, I think gun people, at least a lot of gun people, are tinkerers. It's never quite good enough you know yeah that, that that's great but i think if i do this thing to it you know or like you said well we don't have that and i bet we can do that and i mean let me guess you have always been a tinkerer i'm guessing yeah look look look, look. heather heather's yes. going there yes he has let me tell you about dad yes he's always been doing that I, I don't think of it that way but i guess yeah Yes, yeah, back, so back a couple yes. of weeks ago, I was just down in the garage with a, a, a pound of molding clay, molding up some new uh, pistol grips, which... You do know that that's not normal, right? (laughs) (laughs) I didn't know that. That's that's not normal. That's what you guys guys do, you know. (laughs) The garage is our haven. I mean, that's you. You want to find me? The garage. Let's go to the garage. That's where you got to be. Doing stuff. I said, what were you doing with a pound of molding clay or modeling clay? What are you doing? Yeah, there's there's another niche. I feel for uh, pistol grips. There's there's a lot of similarities between the pistol grips that are on the market, mm-hmm. and of course the same thing with with cheek sizes and hand sizes are different. Right. So 
So I'm just try- I'm just trying to come up with a different idea. And one of the funny ones that's making me laugh is I was in the garage um, a few weeks ago, and there were some golf balls laying around. So I I took some epoxy glue and I I um, I took three golf balls, glued them together, and then I put two golf balls down on the bottom for a palm rest. So the pistol grip made a was pistol actually, grip out of golf balls. Yeah, and. I know it's you're, you're, used, you're used to this, aren't you? <laughs> it yeah. was funny and it looks goofy, yeah. but when you actually grab it, you know the, everything's round on the planet, right? Mm-hmm. So you put the golf ball in in the cup of your hand, and it fits pretty cool. It fits pretty nice. Now I'm not saying that that's what it's going to be, but <laughs> I don't but think it, it, worked. <laughs> it was it was kind of funny. He, he's going to name that new company Teed Off. Yeah, <laughs> so shooting in golf. Shooting, shooting, well, actually, shooting in golf is an interesting combination. There, there are. I've been with a, a lot of golfers, pro golfers, who love to shoot. Mm-hmm. And there are a lot of similarities. And we were kind of talking our way through it. They said, well, you have grip, stance, alignment, swing for wing shooting, follow through. And we kind of started comparing and going, actually, there's a lot there yeah. when you think about it. Same with hockey. I don't yeah. I don't know about that. Coordinate. I live in Louisiana. What do I know about that? <laughs> <laughs> we, we don't, uh, the only ice we have, we put into drinks. What I got, you know. <laughs> Hockey. Oh, my God. I know. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Says the Minnesota guy. My ankles know. were too weak. I wasn't very good at hockey. <laughs> so, But now you are, uh, you're Arizona and Minnesota, but mostly you're Arizona these days. Yeah, Minnesota politics um, um, are a little bit confusing to me because you've got over a half a million deer hunters in Minnesota, but yet the Minnesota population keeps uh, voting in anti-gun politicians. I just I just don't get it. So we changed our residency from uh, Minnesota to Arizona here about a year and a half ago. And of course, Arizona is a quite friendly gun state. Sure. Um, in Minnesota, you we as a manufacturer with the, the Type 2, Class 2 manufacturing license in Minnesota for DPMS, we had to occasionally get involved with silencers right um, for government contract solicitations for law enforcement and we found that there's a state law which they're they e- they have either passed or in the process of passing in Minnesota where we couldn't as a manufacturer possess silencers and we had the license to manufacture them in Minnesota wait 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 you could make them but you couldn't possess them yeah that, that's yeah a little bit hard to work with so if you did make them <laughs> now you're in violation least. of state law so when we did some solicitations we had to get a letter from the general contractor um, on that, on that, uh, I think it was a, a SAS project or something. So we had to get a letter from another general contractor that we had to show to the state of Minnesota to allow us to possess a silencer. I mean, how ridiculous! Now, Arizona, we can have silencers. We can have and anybody can carry. No, uh, no permit needed. Uh, concealed. And of course, open carry is law of the land, and and yeah. actually fairly popular. You're going to see people yeah. open carrying in Arizona. Yeah, you know, you do. Yeah, that's. I was going to ask you, man, uh, uh, with this explosion where literally in every state it's legal, it may not be practical in some states to get a, a permit, but more and more people carrying all the time, what are you seeing in terms of the end user changes? And I'm really thinking specifically of the number of women who are coming into the marketplace now. The number of women coming in, we really are, are trying to move towards the women in the market. Uh, we came out with the first fender. It's been very, very popular. Of course, that's the ever-popular Glock 43 now. Oh, yeah. But uh, the women's market, and that's just one the, one of our many things for the women's market. It's, it just allows a woman to position the pistol that she carries and move it from purse to purse to purse. And it keeps the gun separate. It's in a real holster. It's in a real holster. Yeah. It is... It is the trigger guard is covered. Of course, right. this is empty. Okay. Unloaded. Okay. But uh, it keeps it secure. Right. It it allows the woman to Ooh, Velcro, move it there we go. wherever she wants and move it from purse to purse. Hold that thought. i got to run to a quick break here. I want to continue with that because uh, we've got, they're telling us a third, maybe 40% of people getting their carry permits these days are women, have different carry needs. But I'll tell you, I look at that and I'm thinking briefcase, computer bag, no telling what. We'll be right back with more Gun Talk. Covering all aspects of gun ownership every week on this fine radio station. You're listening to Gun Talk with Tom Gresham. 
We are having so much fun here. During the breaks, uh, guess what we talked about? Guns, shooting, purses. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Makeup. <laughs> Makeup. Makeup. That's Makeup right. and purses. So, yeah. so, so, Matt, tell me about your purse collection now. Uh, <laughs> yes, it's, it's, quite, it's quite amazing. It matches my ensemble very, very nicely. So, so you, you actually went purse shopping as you were developing the purse to finish? Yes, yes, we did. Uh, to, get, to get a couple sizes that work very well and to get it to balance out, it was very to, important to me and important for the company to make sure it works. When we put it out there, we want women to grab this and just like it. Mm-hmm. So, yes, we went to, uh, uh, I went to the mall and went purse shopping. My wife knew something was up when I said, let's go to the mall. Uh, well, that's probably I, the only time in my life she said, I'm going to wait for you in the car. Well, a, I, I just got to tell you, Heather was impressed when you got to Clutch. The clutch. Yeah, you knew the name Clutch. I'm, I'm I learned a lot about purses when we were working on this. You might know more than me now. <laughs> it's like, oh, my. But it's the women, uh, there's, there were, there's just, becoming more and more for the women out there more and more women are getting into and if this. it doesn't work it doesn't fit the purse they're not going to carry it they're, they're not, not going to use it i mean who, or if, who it's, would? if it's uncomfortable or if it's cumbersome or and and really i know this sounds crazy but it took uh, look took almost a year to get this down to being this simple huh when oh the first one i made was was absolutely a monster it you're going to have to have a degree from MIT to put this thing together, get it in your purse to work right. So it was like, okay, now that's, even my wife told me, that's too cumbersome. It won't, it won't work. Okay. It's, need to keep it, the KISS method, you know, right. keep it simple. There you go. So we really worked on getting it simple and convenient. We've got a couple of sizes. Uh, we even have a different backer now that we call the pack mat. Uh, the pack mat works real good. we got a small size for the ladies' clutches. Like um it also works real good in briefcases, mole bags, uh, satchels, because the, the backer will keep it stiff and mm-hmm. keep it positioned, okay. but still allow the pistol to be safely stored in one location. The trigger guard's covered. Yes. It has its retention, so it's not going to fall out, but still be easy to draw. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's... And, and that, I want to touch on that, because if you just throw up pistol into a purse and it's rattling around with everything else oh in there gosh. you got stuff that can get in the trigger guard i mean not to mention the fact that it just gets dirty and lint and all that but i mean you get keys and junk and you could conceivably it's happened uh have an ad you yeah. could have uh you know the gun could go off but more than that just when you need it and you reach in there you're trying to root around and get all that junk out of the way and you don't know where it is so if a woman had this in a, and you can see how much of a practice with a purse when a woman actually has this in her purse and the purse is over her shoulder she can take her hand as she's walking through the parking lot or and she's uncomfortable she can actually take her hand and put it in her purse and she can put her hand on her pistol she but, doesn't have to draw it and the trigger guard is still covered and the trigger guard is still covered until right. you fully draw the pistol right but you can actually have you know you can be in you can be in your ready position mm-hmm. uh, when seconds count if you're uncomfortable if the ladies are uncomfortable it's it's just there we also brought out our newer and that's part of the modular system so you can you know just take the same holster off peel that velcro off move it to the bedside back up to the belly band to the ram mount you know we've offered that for you can mount on a bicycle in the console of your car mm-hmm. however on your four-wheeler whatever you on want your to put, four-wheeler where you want to stick it so it is it's part of the modular system you okay. know we've also stepped up we've got the the cargo pocket rocket the pocket rocket was very been very very well for us okay we've had a lot of people wanting a larger one All right so we came out with a cargo pocket rocket and it's trying to get mm-hmm. certain pistols fit out very well so when you're actually carrying this in your coat you think of it backwards when you're carrying this in your cargo pant pocket or your coat pocket mm-hmm. or your jacket pocket, you want it backwards. So when it's printing, ah. it's printing like yeah, you, like a notebook or a just, wallet. It just, it's a big old flat surface. Yes. It doesn't have the imprint of a gun. It doesn't have the imprint of a gun. And then when you go to draw, it's not a fast draw, but when you go to draw, we've let, set it to where you can actually get your, and the trigger guard is still covered, mm-hmm. but you can actually get your hand in there and ah. then slowly mm-hmm. separate it. And once you separate it, this will raise up, so when you draw, this will usually catch on your cargo pants or your coat pocket. So when you draw, you actually come out in a ready position. Okay. 
And uh, like I said, we've had a lot of requests for that, so we worked on one. Hmm. And then again, of course, it's like everything else, we try to keep it simple, but usable, and very utilitarian. Well, and of course, you listen. I know you listen to your customers, and you guys work with various trainers, and so you're always out there kind of saying, okay, how are people carrying? What are they wearing? And yes. part of it is, what do you wear? You know, that whole deal. So uh, it's what you, what you wear in Phoenix in the summer is not the same thing you're going to wear in July or January in Duluth. Good point. You know, so you can't have the same system working for you. You have to be able to change that out. You have to adapt. Yeah. So there you go. Hold on to that thought. We're going to take another quick break. When we come back, we're going to talk about some turkey hunting, where you guys are heading next, and some other things. So uh, this is Gun Talk. We'll be right back. All right, we've got Randy Luth, Heather Mayer, Mayan, right? Mayan. Mayan. Yeah. Coming up the news. It's now think of the Mayans. Like the Mayan. The okay, that's right. There you go. And, and, of course, we've got uh, Matt from Cross Street Holsters is with us. Uh, one of the things we're talking about is I want to transition from the number of women who are getting into self-defense carrying guns. And, Randy, you mentioned we ought to talk a little bit about just getting into shooting and getting how people get involved in it. You grew up in this business in this crazy world of firearms how did you get started you know I'm, I'm still working on it every day you know practice makes perfect but yeah. um you know i started dad was in a trap league he was um i think clay and did you do any sporting clays, sporting clays, trap clays trap, yeah, yeah i think all of it but he'd bring me up to the gun range there i don't was that in the cities i think and both yeah i kind of grew up with the other shooters kids you know okay and i just remember sure sitting You're back watching dad shoot hanging out at the trap club yep. yeah and then um he'd always let me shoot you know the lighter guns and right because I'm, I'm not very strong <laughs> and then uh and then he um with dpms moved up to st cloud and um he he purchased the gun range next door, and so that's when I started shooting more with him. Mm -hmm. um, and then eventually, for Christmas, he got me my my first rifle. Oh yeah. I, yep, my first black rifle. He got me a Years 308. Ago. Yeah, he, you know, pink zebra stripe. No <laughs> the whole works. <laughs> oh yeah, pink zebra stripes. There yeah, you go. So that'll make it, you know, girly. There but, you go. Yeah. So I've just been kind of. You know, slowly. No hunting yet. Mm -hmm. Maybe soon. <laughs> okay. Maybe well, this weekend. Maybe, maybe this, this weekend. weekend. So where are you guys heading? What are you doing? Well, we're migrating from Phoenix to here. Then tomorrow we're heading up to um, Carrollton, Missouri area where we've got some hunting land that okay. um, I've been um, acquiring over the past decade pieces here and there. But it's excellent turkey hunting, excellent whitetail, bobcats, ah. skunks, raccoons. So it's, uh, it's a pretty good... Um, area to work on shooting skills and sure. hunting so we're heading up there tomorrow turkey season's open now it opened on the 20th i believe so we're yeah. a little bit late but we'll be there it's okay yeah. you know just getting there is the main thing yeah. getting out there and being there when the sun comes up and doing the whole deal so now are you going to turkey hunt yeah um my husband's meeting us so cool. he's he's getting now, is involved he, in hunting. Yeah, so I was going to ask, has he hunted turkey, turkeys? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So he's he's mostly just done turkey. He's going to hopefully do deer coming up. But, wow. yep, so it's going to be a family affair. Yeah. Oh, that'll be fun. Yeah. It will be. It'll be good, good deal. It's uh, interesting how many family businesses there are also in the firearms world. I mean, I'm looking at your business. I'm looking at your business, Matt. I'm thinking, you know, everything from the Brownells to the Hornadies to the Noslers, you know. I mean, you just go right on down the line. Point. And there really are a lot, and they're multi-generational, yeah. too, which is the other part of it. And more coming up. I mean, just on the AR-15 side of it, um, I was talking to Steve at Blue Book here a couple of years ago, and in the... Uh, gun blue book of guns right i think he said they had 135 ar-15 manufacturers and so with that comes not only uh, new shooters but new families new families and of course that 135 was that week yeah. you know? <laughs> yeah. i don't know that anybody actually knows how many companies are making ars you know because part of the deal is you don't have to make the lowers you just you can buy the lowers and then you're you're actually assembling, yeah. are you not? Yeah. I mean, you, you know more about this than anybody. Yeah. Yeah, and it's in some cases it's cheaper, less overhead to to just do the assembly side, and in fact that's basically at DPMS what we did. My background was machining, but um, it's pretty costly to buy 
$150,000 CNC machining centers or turning centers right. and then buy the material and then deal with scrap and then hire the machinist. So a lot of my friends in the industry, a lot of my uh, former co-workers had started machine shops. So I just used my buddies uh, as my... If you can't uh, take uh, advantage of your friends, what good are they? Yeah. And, <laughs> you know? and give them money. There you go. There you go. That was good. So, all right. Ultimately, what is it about the AR that people like so much? Well, I mean, it's the evolution has been fun for me to see because when I started in 1986, I mean, the AR-15 was the the redheaded stepchild, the evil they, gun. Did of not the want to even talk about it. In fact, in fact, they would not let them in the shot show. Um, we our first shot show, I think, was 90 or 91, mm -hmm. and um, we were we were looked at um, with. Um, Kind of the same way you are now. Hesitation. <laughs> yeah, agree here. But you're right. It was uh, it was a challenge. I mean, we would um, we would be looked upon differently. I can remember at the NRA convention um, not that long ago, maybe ten years ago, maybe less, where at various cities around the United States, where people would walk NRA, NRA members would walk by our booth and and basically flip us off because really? they felt that uh, we had no right to be there. And that obviously has changed uh, dramatically, which is which is pretty exciting. So, the air the air fifteen is popular because it is exactly that. You can, what you've done with your pickup truck or with your car by putting on mag wheels or different tires or visors or mm -hmm. or different windows. You can do that with the air fifteen, and it's it's a modular type rifle system so anybody can do it basically in their shop or their garage well the other thing you can do with it i'm just thinking again i'm looking at all of us here you can make an ar-15 fit anybody mm -hmm. you can get you know the long barrel heavy ones you can get make them lightweight you can get short you can have short stocks you can have you know almost anything well the calibers too great I mean, you great go point. from 22 long rifle has become real popular it was difficult you had the conversions back uh, 20 years ago and now you have dedicated 22s that actually work because right. it, it, they really haven't worked that well. And you're seeing more um, more 9 millimeters and pistol carvings coming out. So They're actually reliable where they were not before. Correct. Yeah. And and the so the caliber makes it exciting and right. and uh, the fact that you can change upper barrel assemblies. And then you've got the large action for hunting. And, of course, we at DPMS were... We're pretty aggressive on introducing hunting with ARs. You were really one of the first one pushing that. And we were talking last night. How many big game animal species do you think you've taken with ARs? Well, I, you know, I've not counted, but I suppose uh, probably close to 20 maybe. Different species. Yeah, Africa. Um, Alaska. Alaska. Yeah, maybe 15, I suppose. Wow. Yeah. Which is uh, sometimes might be a little bit undergun, but that's where the semi-automatic comes in because with a good compensator, you can uh, get on the animal the second shot. If you if you right. your first shot placement isn't that good, you're right on at the second shot and and, uh, and put the animal down so you don't have to track them down and uh, the animal doesn't have to suffer. So a compensator really a good comp really makes a big difference. Oh, big it? time, yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, you're basically essentially no muzzle rise. Yeah, especially. Um, competition shooting, but hunting as well. Now the sound that gets a little bit uh, gets a little loud, sometimes. but you know what? You know you're wearing muffs in competition, and honestly, I'll tell you, I've gotten to where I wear uh, a lot of times either electronic muffs or plugs mm -hmm. for at least some of some of the hunting we do. So right. you know, that'll yeah, work. In. All right, hold that thought here. We're going to take another quick break, and we're going to come back for our last segment here. Uh, we're having a bunch of fun. We're talking about holsters, pistols, concealed carry, ARs, stocks, all that kind of stuff. Uh, Luth-AR.com, yeah. right? Crossbreed Holsters. Crossbreed Holsters, www.crossbreedholsters.com. Crossbreedholsters.com, pretty easy. Hey, I'm guntalk.com. How about that? Nice. We'll be right back. So much fun here. I'm talking to actually the only guy I know that actually has driven the cannonball run. Oh, you know, I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And and what Miss Mango? Miss Mango. That's that's uh, that was a car my my brother bought uh, and Dodge, started working on. Dodge Charger. It. Yes, it's an 06 Dodge Charger, and the color is Go Man Go. Okay. And we've always called it Go Mango. And then Mango. after we started doing some work on it, and Mark moved into a better car, and I kind of started doing some work. It's been 
it's not stock. We'll just leave it at that. <laughs> so it's 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 she, like a gun. It's not stock. It's not stock. It's been modified. There yes, uh, accessorized. Uh, we'll call it the accessorized. It sounds better. But she's affectionately known as Miss Mango, Dang and even it. the guys at the shop call her Miss Mango. It's, there you go. It's she has her own place. Okay, and we bounce from that to the guy who held the first zombie shoot the that zombies. I ever heard of. What would you say you couldn't get 200 people out for a trap shoot, but what happened Well, here? you know, I don't even know. How, it, the guys at DPMS, they came up to me and they said, hey, let's have a zombie shoot. I said, what's a zombie shoot? <laughs> and they said, well, you got to you get these targets and you can only shoot them in the head and, and we'll get some paper targets or they had paper targets. So I said, sounds good. Let's go for it. So we had the benefit at DPMS. DPMS is located on on a, a public shooting range, okay. of, of which uh, we own both. So we worked hand-in-hand hand with both. So we could use the gun range to put on special events for DPMS. So I went with their suggestion, and the guys put together the first annual DPMS uh, Outbreak Omega zombie shoot. Well, to me, I didn't know anything about it. I'm going, oh, let's give it a whirl. So, ironically, that morning, I was hunting turkeys on the gun club property. Okay. And I'm, I was actually sitting in a blind at first, and I see all these cars driving by at 8 o'clock in the morning. I'm going, where are they going? Must be, must be a flight at the airport or something. I mean, cars are going by like crazy. And then I spot some turkeys across the road, a few hundred yards across the road, so I, I'm all camoed up. I had uh, Dustin's ghillie suit on. So I'm belly crawling in the ditch to sneak up on these turkeys that are down there. And all these cars are driving by, and they're, they're pointing. Some of them saw me, some didn't, right. but some saw me as I'm belly crawling to sneak up on these turkeys. Of course, got a shot off, didn't uh, kill the turkey. But then I, I go back to the gun club, and the parking lot is completely filled. There was the first year there was 450 shooters there Holy cow. and we couldn't get two the year before we couldn't get 200 people to show up for a, a trap shoot that's been going on for years so that was extreme growth and, and you, you said that you think that's we're talking about why they are so popular I'm saying movies TV and you said the zombie movement actually Alex pushed the ARs also yeah, I think um, you know it was it was the perfect storm so to speak but when you had that generation wanted to do something with guns, but trap shooting might be kind of boring. Mm -hmm. Sporting clays might be too difficult. But the AR-15 was there, and somebody uh, promoted it. So it turned into be a huge event. We had the next year, we had 1,000 people there. 1,000 yeah. people yes. at yeah. a zombie shoot. Yeah. Yeah. That is yeah. amazing. Was, and people that would never have shown up at your place otherwise. Yeah. Uh, you know, that's really, once again, we talk about uh, entry paths and gateways, and we find them any way we can. If we can get them into the shooting sports, they go, wow, that was fun. And then they become shooters, and here we go. We can introduce them to other sports. Guys, I want to thank you so much for being here. Was this easier than you thought it was going to be? Yeah, I was a little nervous. This yeah, was, this I, I know. Fun. <laughs> this is fun. Okay. Well, and I, I always tell people, they said, what are we going to do on the radio? I said, same thing we do before we're on the radio. <laughs> Talk about guns Talk. and stuff, <laughs> yes, and cars or whatever, right? <laughs> So we're we'll, uh, we'll be doing uh, some more TV here. We're going to do the the Guns of Gear TV show. If you want to see what we're doing here, go to our YouTube channel. Just look for Gun Talk there, and you can actually see us doing this radio show. Which I don't know. After you look at it, you may say, "Yeah, I think I like radio better." Who knows? <laughs> but I really appreciate my friends here, Randy, Lou, Heather. Thank you for being here, Matt. Uh, obviously, got great companies uh, and great people. I like hanging out with you guys. Thank you. Too. All right. Go out, do a little shooting. Take somebody with you. Have some fun. Be safe. Remember those four rules of gun safety. And join us again next week.